Welcome to Seth Craft. I'm Seth. I have three Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers behind me. I first set these up and was warned that I would have to have a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply, so that I have clean, consistent power on these printers. Well, I didn't do that, and I started printing, and I was doing some tall prints like this, and they came out so smooth and so nice. Well, cold weather hit, and I installed an oil-filled an oil-filled heater. Well, every time that would cycle on or off, I started getting uh, step issues. So if you see this right here, there is a line around this tall print, and uh, what was happening is the uh, power would blink real quick and cause a step. So uh, this is only one, but I would have them multiple times in these long prints. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use a power station. So I hooked up a power station, it ran these just fine, but I didn't realize that at hour 48, the power station uh, AC output turns off. And so I wound up with half prints. So what should look like this ended up like this because it turned off. So uh, if you've ever printed something big, you know that uh, on hour six, seven, and eight, when that happens, it makes you really sad. So. Um, I have decided it is time to use an actual UPS here for my 3D printers. So today I'm going to be installing the CyberPower UPS. So let's go ahead and open this box up, take a look at it, and then get it hooked up to my printers. And then I will do a full print with this, with my oil uh, heater over here. And hopefully we will have consistent good results even with that cycling power um, because this battery backup should hopefully um, give these printers consistent output all the time. I bought the CyberPower uh, CP1350 off of Amazon for less than $200. It has a, a 900 watt output, so should allow me to run three printers on this one power supply. So let's go ahead and uh, pull this out of here and get everything set up. These UPS are typically used on computers or security systems, but I think for the application I've got here with 3D printers, it's gonna work just fine. On the front, power button, an LCD screen, uh, there's a display, a mute, enter, setup, USB-C, and USB-A. The sides just have uh, some cooling vents on them, as you can see right there. And then if we turn to the back, you can see all of the uh, connections. So it's got coax and ethernet for network, USB, it's got a serial connection, a fault. These over here have the surge plus battery protection and these are just surge. So the ones that I need to use are these gray color ones over here and that will allow the battery to kick on if the power were to flicker or to go off for a minute or two. Now this is a 900 watt, so it'll run all my printers, but um, I think if I start them all at once, the heating cycles may be a little bit too much, so I'll need to alternate turning those printers on. I'm gonna plug this up and see what the state of charge is before I use it on my printers. Okay, I've got it plugged up. Let me push the power button here and see if it will turn on for me. Maybe I have to hold it down. There we go. So 120 volts input, that's what we like to see. The power plug is online and it says the uh, battery capacity is at full. So maybe it uh, is shipped at full and I don't have to charge it up. Let's see, output 60 Hertz, that's good. Zero Watts. Well, after actually reading the instruction booklet, it says charge the unit for eight hours before use. So uh, it does come with an instruction book and a USB cable. I'm gonna let this sit here for eight hours and then um, tonight I'll come back and uh, hook this up and we can start a print to see how well it does um, for a long print. And I'm back. It is uh, 9 p.m. and I have let this sit for 11 hours. So. It was already at 100% charge. I'm not sure that it was necessary to um, let it charge for that long, but we should be good to go now. 
So if you look over here, I have got a power strip underneath my printers. And uh, that's what I've been using to run these printers from. But uh, on the back of this UPS, it has six different receptacles. And so I kind of feel like it's going to be better to use the back of this instead of that power strip. Because what if uh, one printer is interfering with the other? I don't know. Maybe it will. Perhaps I will run that test someday. But for now, I'm going to move this close to the printers and then let all of them connect into the back. The profile on the UPS is 4 inches by approximately 14 inches. And so I was looking at the uh, distance I have between the wall and the printer to see what I can do here. Taking a look at my available space, I'm going to try to slide this in between these two and uh, hopefully the cords from the furthest one over there will be able to reach. The main thing is that it's got to be able to clear right here. I don't think it's going to reach just yet. Let me see how far back I can go. I have the CyberPower UPS plugged up into the wall and all three of my Bamboo Lab A1 printers are now plugged up into the battery backup side of the UPS. I'm going to hold down the power button here. And that should turn on all of these printers. Yep, lights are coming on, looking good. Now that I have all three of my printers connected to the UPS, it's time to run a test. So on straight grid power, this was the result I had. I had the uh, stepping issues because honestly, I think it's my oil heater clicking on and off. Um, so whenever I had the power station on, I was then able to get a nice smooth result. However, after I um, ran it for about 48 hours, it uh, cut off and did not finish the print. So now that I have the UPS, this should keep uh, consistent power, but also allow it to print indefinitely as long as the grid power is on. So I'm going to start up this A1 right here and print out that um, same piece. And then I'll let you know tomorrow uh, the results of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this set up and we will uh, see what happens. The oil filled heater is down here and it is plugged up to the same circuit that the printers are plugged up to. So I've got the UPS right over here and uh, currently the job is running. Now the outdoor temperature tonight is supposed to get down to uh, the low teens. And so uh, that heater will be kicking on and off all night long. And that will give us a good test to see how well this performs with the UPS. So, all right, I will be back in the morning. 12 hours later, I'm back to check out to see how this print has done. Last night, it got down to about 18 degrees, so I know this heater was cycling on and off multiple times. So uh, once again, we've got, uh, this is what happens whenever the uh, power is coming straight from the grid with no UPS. It's got that missed step. And uh, this is what happens <laughs> when you have a power station that turns off automatically after about 48 hours. And let's see what we got up here. So yeah, it's already broken free from that. Uh, so <laughs> no missed steps on that side. Uh, the seam here is where it just is seamed together. And uh, yeah, I feel like that has come out um, perfectly. So yes, the importance of a UPS is obvious and evident from this result right here. I will definitely be including a UPS on these three printers as I've got now, and then any additional printers I get will also have a UPS connected. So excellent. A uh, 190 bucks, I think is what I spent, and it was well worth it. I will have a link to this UPS in the description down below, the CyberPower CP1500AVRLCD3. <laughs> That's quite a name, huh? So, well, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have a single 3D printer or a whole room of them, then I definitely recommend that you get a UPS. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.